Hello, welcome or welcome back to my new Croft Kitchen series. For episode 4, I'm going to be focusing on fish. Keep watching to find out more. The dish I'm cooking today is grilled monkfish with a Bloody Mary sauce and tobacco fries. Very simple, very nice fresh dish, three components. The main element is the monkfish, which I got from my uh, father-in-law, Kenny. Thank you, Kenny, very nice which I've tidied up and removed the membrane. If you get this from the fishmonger, they'll prepare that for you. For the sauce, nice simple sauce, basically a very simple fresh tomato sauce with the components of Bloody Mary. We've got our garlic puree, our tomatoes, our celery, our shallot, tomato puree. These are the basic store cupboard ingredients which we have in. The vodka itself, a main element of the Bloody Mary, Liam Perrins and Tabasco. So I'm going to start with the sauce. First of all, I'll just place the monkfish over there just now until we grill it later on. So first of all, we're going to take our shallot. If you didn't have a shallot, these um, ingredients are what I've got either in the fridge or in the cupboard. So this is how this dish has evolved. So, let's say if you didn't have a shallot, small onion would be fine as well. So again, we're not being judged on knife skills here. But I want to impart as much flavour as possible from these ingredients. But we will be passing the sauce later on. element is our celery. Again, a, a major part of this Bloody Mary. Now, again, seeing the pasta in the sauce, we would usually peel the celery to remove these fibrous pieces, but no need. So we're just going to... Here I have two sticks of celery. There's plenty to impart the flavour. The aroma from this is just normal, the freshness of the celery. Reminds me of the Polish days when we used to make a, a mirepoix, which is basically a chopped vegetables, all neatly chopped, and then sweating that off. Uh, the, the, the aroma that that pan would give to the, the room itself when you walk in. Our tomatoes, I've got about eight tomatoes for this sauce, which I will just, again, chop roughly, and every part of the tomato, seeds, and everything going into it, that's what all the flavour is. The beauty about this sauce is, it's so simple and fresh, you're not taking all the time at the stove with us. Fantastic way to accompany this fish. So with the, the fresh zini tomatoes cutting into that meaty monkfish. Just like that. Just with pretty much prepared the bulk of our sauce. Now we'll move over to the cooker and get it going. So, into our pan, for our sauce, we'll add a small drizzle of olive oil. The speed of the, uh, this um, sauce is going to come is quite phenomenal. So simple, so fresh. We can start by sweating this shallow dough. At this 
point you want to add a teaspoon of tomato puree. The reason why adding tomato puree is, is just plain green tomato, which we've got in the fridge anyway. I'm just going to put the tomato puree out. First of all, get that raw out of it. But the tomatoes themselves are just plain green. Um, is it the season for these tomatoes? I'm not entirely sure. How sweet are they? Probably not very. But we're going to squeeze that as best we can. By adding the tomato puree for a bit more body. For a bit of garlic. Teaspoon. Juice. About half a lemon. Splash of white wine, just a small glass. Now that will just start to come back up to the boil. We're going to reduce that down, let everything come together. Add two or three or five drops of the impedance, just a couple of dashes. Tabasco. Uh, at this point I've had no other seasonings apart from the Liam Perrins and the Tabasco. So we'll crank the temperature up and we're going to let that come together. So while the sauce is bubbling away nicely on the Cooker, we'll prepare the tobacco fries. Just some lovely cypress potatoes, a uh, lovely dry potato, give a nice crisp finish. Failing that, again, you um, use the carrot pink or a decent dry potato. And we're going to create these the long way in the grater. Finger. So for the tobacco fries, in our preheated fryer, 180 degrees, we put a potato, which has been squeezed out, nice and dry, and we'll do this very carefully, again, working with hot oil, we're going to do this just a wee bit at a time. Fish, which I've patted dry, just 
Sí, pues vamos. Un ad. Un buen tablespoon. Oil. This is, a, this is a meaty fish. Now, when it comes to fish, people ask how long do I cook it for? Very, very complicated question. Depends on the fish, depends on the thickness. Uh, but I'll show you a way to overcome this. So, onto our hot griddle. Again, always oil either the fish or the meat or whatever you're working with. Never oil the griddle pan. Just going to create so much smoke. Now what we're looking for, we're not going to touch it, it's going to take about 3 to 4 minutes before I even attempt to look at our fish, before we turn it over. Okay, so the fish is now at about three or four minutes. We're going to see if we can. Okay, again. They say watch things happen at sea. <laughs> I'm yet to see it, to be honest, but no problem. What if um, we've gathered now is that the pan needs seasoning, um, not the fish, the pan. And what I mean by seasoning the pan is, um, obviously the pan, it's, the fish is stuck to the pan, but to solve that problem, we add about two tablespoons of um, salt to the pan itself, a couple of tablespoons of oil, and we scrub that over a warm heat, and that'll give you a non-stick finish. Uh, here, unfortunately, we've come this far, but all is not lost. We'll continue as planned. What we're looking for, I do not cook, what I'm looking for is this handy little tool here for those who are maybe a bit more cautious about cooking fish. We are going to take this fish to the ideal temperature of 63 degrees. This little thermometer only cost me seven pounds. We'll just have a look just now and see. It's only been a couple of minutes since I've turned to go off. So we're about halfway, halfway there. So another three to four minutes on this side, and we'll see how we go on from there. Okay, let's just let's have three or four minutes now. Let's turn that. I just think it's part of the fish. Yeah, it's just going to 62. Yeah, 60, yeah. Yeah. And now we'll just finish off the sauce. We've come this far, but we'll continue on course and finish our sauce. We've been on now for 20 minutes. Let's make a little more. You can see it now. It's still fresh. It's light. Look at how it is. That's one flavour. That's one piece just giving that extra bit of body. Um, to finish it off. I'm just going to add just the smallest amount of salt. A whiff of black pepper. And you want to just add a touch more. So that's worth two drops. One and a splash of also Again, depending on the tomatoes and the time of year, I do want to add a touch of sweetness to the to the sauce. Now we could usually use sugar. But today I'm going to add one of my basic store cover ingredients, mirin. And I believe it's probably more, I'd say, sociably acceptable way of adding sugar. All there is is uh, fermented rice, uh, f fermented in barrels, and it's got a very low, low alcohol content and the sugar should occur naturally in it. So to this, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of melon, just for the sweetness. And the final component we want to add to our sauce is our vodka. So what I'm looking for to this quantity, even for about maybe 25 ml. Let's 
Mehta Kuga for a couple of minutes. Uh, the beauty about the vodka, adding it at this stage is it reacts as a palate cleanser um, on the palate, which works really well with the tomato, which is going to work fantastic with the lemon fish. All we're going to do is pass that through a fine sieve. So for our sauce, which we've taken off the simmer, I'm just going to pass the sauce through the sieve. which will almost thicken our sauce. We don't want to tap over the sauce any more than we have to. Into our bowl, we'll take out the sauce. We'll take out one fish. almost seared monkfish with a bloody mary sauce and tobacco fries. To finish up, I like to think of it as a Keith Floyd moment as the show must go on and this is dinner for us tonight. Enjoy. <laughs>